everyone and a big, big, big welcome to the first Q&A of our Masterclass series. If you're here, you've probably watched the first three lessons of our Masterclass that is going on now. And the excitement is ramping up. It's a really, really great time for the team and everybody involved. We have taught thousands and thousands of people with our free trainings and we are just having such fun with it and we hope you are too. I'm Lisa, Community Manager from Louis Botanica and I'm here with the lovely Therese. Hello, I'm Therese. I am one of the formula, uh, the grading tutors at Formula Botanica. I've been with Formula Botanica for almost a year. So I grade some of the projects that come in. I get to help our students um, in the Ask the Tutor forum. So even though they're in our online course, they're never by themselves. They always have somewhere to go to get direction, guidance, answers, um, things like that. So it's good to be here with you, Lisa. And I know Sarah and Sarah are in the chat helping us. So. Thank you, ladies. Don't yeah, we get there. all the team involved, so that everybody works on this. As I said, it is great because we know that we are teaching people how to formulate. We are changing their futures, and they don't even know it yet. People are discovering formulation, getting excited about it. They're joining our masterclass, and before you know it, they have just discovered this something inside that they didn't even know it was there, and then they become students of ours and end up changing their lives. And we absolutely love that. We love seeing it, and we know this is the beginning part of it. Now, if you don't know what our masterclass is, it's a 10-part series, which is pre-recorded. It's not live. All you have to do is get a ticket, go to your study area, and you can watch your lessons there. And there will be, at this moment, three lessons that you can watch. And that is why we're doing this Q&A, so we can answer a couple of your questions about making your emulsion all the way to making your eye cream. Now, we always get questions of people kind of going a little bit... It's good because people want to think big and people want to start thinking about botanicals and preservation, but this is the first Q&A, so we're gonna try and keep it as simple as possible. And we will try because Therese knows so much and her knowledge is so vast. <laughs> we will try and keep it to the first couple of lessons of the masterclass. I'm just gonna to pop to the chat and see who's here. We've got so many people here, that is so great. Adrice is yes. here again, Dana, Patricia, people from Jamaica, USA, uh, lots from USA, Chicago, Missouri, they're all over the place. Toronto, mm -hmm. oh, London, oh, hey, hometown, thank you very much. That is amazing, thank you so much. We always get so many people joining our lives now and we get students who are studying with us already joining in the lives, who have already taken part in the masterclass. We like to establish a really warm, wonderful, supportive community atmosphere and we're really proud of that. And I see that every time you guys join the lives, so thank you so much. As we're going through, if you have any questions, just let us know and we'll try and get to it. We might not be able to get to all of them because so many questions come through, but we will do our very best. So should we get started, Therese? Yes, let's go. Okay, let's just have a look. Okay, well, this is a great question to start with, and I'm going to throw this one up. Okay, so what is an emulsion and do you need one, Therese, in every formulation? All right. An emulsion is to put it in very, very simple terms. As you saw, if you watched the um, masterclass session today, it is taking, if you took oil and you took water and you poured one into the other, they would not mix. Um, what an emulsion is, is it is taking an ingredient called an emulsifier. It has one head that loves oil and one um, tail that loves water. And it brings those two together so that you no longer, when you properly form that emulsion, you can no longer see a separation between your oil and your water. So it just brings two ingredients that aren't compatible normally, and it finds a way to marry them together beautifully. Mm -hmm. um, do you need one in every formulation? Um, no, you can make anhydrous, which is all oil, um, oil-based, oil-soluble ingredients. Um, you can make a lot of water-soluble, like toners and things like that. But if you want to bring oil and water together, then yes, you will want to do an emulsion. And they're so common. They're so common. They're in your creams, your lotions. We're putting it in this eye cream. Great. And as you mentioned, we're going further with this class. So we still have seven lessons to go after lesson three. So it's a whole process. We show you how to make this eye cream from the very beginning. We cover everything from botanicals, equipment, all of it. So you would have seen the equipment lesson, I think, if you'd have watched yesterday. So for people watching, if you're new, don't worry. It's entirely 100% achievable. And we have thousands of people doing it, jumping in and showing their creations in our exclusive masterclass Facebook group. 
and I know that the two Sarahs have the comment for the, have the link for that. Sorry, if they can pop that in the comments, please do join that if you haven't already, because we've got thousands of people in there sharing their work selfies, sharing, they will be sharing their emotions and sharing their progress. And it's a really fun place to be and really helps you go through the masterclass as well. Okay, so one piece of equipment that we get people to buy is a thermometer and someone asks, I have a normal cooking thermometer. Is that okay to use for the masterclass? What would we say? That will work. You just need a thermometer that will handle the range of what we're dealing with. You'll see that with our Olive M1000, we like to go to 70 degrees Celsius. And then our cooling phase starts at 40 degrees Celsius. So if your thermometer spans those temperatures, that would be a that would be a, an okay place to start. There are other uh, things that you can buy, but there's some that are even like used in cooking, like the meat thermometers and things like that, that have two probes. Those are fantastic. Yeah, and it's a good point to let everyone know you can use so much that you have in your kitchen. We don't um, want you to go out there buying tons of expensive ingredients. We actually have all the equipment that we recommend on our Amazon links. And we have a UK and a USA store. If the two Sarahs could share that comment as well, so you can jump in there and get some equipment. I think we're in stock for everything. So we do try and help you as much as we can. But yeah, you don't go have to go out there and buy tons of equipment to start. So and just use what you yeah. can, even if you're not sure. So. Okay, question from Ivana. Ivana says, a question considering Olive M1000, when I formulate it is difficult to melt it. I think they're saying, uh, are they melting too slowly? What would you say, Therese? Right. As I mentioned, Olive M, you really need to make sure that you're getting to 70 degrees Celsius. So first of all, make sure that you have a reliable um, thermometer. Um, think of it maybe like something like beeswax where you need to visually see that melt too um, if you don't have a reliable thermometer then really all you have to go on is uh, the visual is it melting can you see that happening um, there's things like are you using a water bath is the temperature high enough in the water do you have enough water coming up to really melt those phases so check out some things like that um, for a little bit of troubleshooting and see if you can get that all of them uh, to do its job Great. And I feel I have to mention there, if something goes wrong, guys, just try it. As Therese says, just try yeah. something. It's all about just taking part and having a go. And the only way you're really going to learn is if you've made something, if it didn't work, just try it again, write down what you did, and you'll be able to figure out the answer yourself. Yes, we um, could do an entire video slide of all of my failed emulsions. <laughs> there's no failures. There's just progress. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. Okay. So Karen asks, what is the maximum amount of rose absolute that I can add to make my own eye cream with the elements of what is in your current formula? So I suppose this person is saying they like what the ingredients that we're using, but they want to put more rose in. What would we say if someone wants to put more or less in? Right. Well, you're talking about a rose absolute. Um, we are dealing with the eye area. So for this master class, we are refraining from using any essential oils or absolutes or things like that. So there's there's also the aspect that there's so much more that's complicated to that answer that I can't just give you an amount. It has to do with the sensitizers that are in that, the safety, things like that. So it really goes, that's a very broad question. It's a great question. Um, but for now, you might want to consider using hydrosols that will give it the scent and beautiful things like that. And until you're very certain about essential oil and sensitizer safety, you might want to might not want to uh, dip into that just yet. Great. Yeah. It's good that, so like I said in the beginning, it's good that people are thinking of adapting the cream, but it is hard mm -hmm. to change one thing of us to specifically say um, the amount, for example. Okay. The lovely Denise is here. Denise, familiar person for our lives. Will the final texture be different if I use a mini whisk and a, or a mini whisker? Um, Denise, the answer is, in short, yes, it will depend upon the tools you have. Uh, we're trying to make it as uniform as possible when we're teaching throughout the master class. So we are encouraging everyone to use kind of the same tools, just a mini whisk. Um, so throughout the class with the the race or the uh, amounts that we're sticking with, the ingredients that we're sticking with, people should see a fairly similar consistency, but you're all working with different temperatures. Um, of your surroundings, things like that. So it could vary a little bit, but your tools will make a slight difference too. 
Okay, fabulous. Okay, so how uh, should I store the emulsion once I've made it from CC? CC, right now, we have not gotten into the lessons on preserving it for safety. So oh, for now, this to store the emulsion, sorry, that they've made in the container. Yeah, yeah. So how they store it? I think they mean um, we recommend they put it in the fridge. Sorry if you were going to say yes. that. Cut you off. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So we haven't gotten to preservation. So we want you to store it in the refrigerator. And right. for now, you could use a pump bottle. You could use an empty jar that you have as long as you you clean it with just with some soapy water and then an isopropyl alcohol. Spray that on there and allow that to dry. Uh, so there are various things that you could find to store this for now. Cool. And then just make sure it goes into the refrigerator. Thanks, Chris. Okay, next one. Okay, Anikin says, I made my cream. I think I might have oyster it a bit too much as it's thick. Could this be the case? Um, it could. Usually whisking too much is not going to make it that much thicker. Um, it could have been maybe a little extra olive M snuck in there, uh, something like that. And, I, and I'm not sure what you're comparing it to also. So if you've made it once and then made it again a second time, anytime we start adjusting other ingredients, adding things in, as we go through this, you're going to see one thing happen today in the course, but then we're going to add botanicals in. So you're, now you're going to have um, on lesson five, we add the botanicals. So then you're going to see, again, just a little bit different texture. Great. So and thank you for all your questions, by the way. There's so many questions coming in. We will do our very yeah. best. I'm gonna, really going to put Therese to work. Okay. So Alison says, so I watched uh, the making of the emulsion today. I watched it being mixed with rose hydrosol. It was difficult to see how thick it went. How long do you mix it for and how thick do you need it to go? So mm -hmm. it's quite hard to describe thickness, but what would we say to Alison? It is. <laughs> <laughs> now with this one, again, it's going to deter be determined by, again, making sure that both of your ingredients reach that same temperature first. So you want to make sure that that's happening. You want to make sure that your olive M has properly melted. And then as far as stirring, you want to make sure that you whisk that. In the video, it tells you, so go back and watch that again. Um, but the video will tell you to continue to whisk that for a few minutes. And then I like to put it in the cold water bath. And I still continue. Like I, I whisk it pretty vigorously in the beginning. Your emulsion is formed by energy. And that energy is going to come from the whisk the the physical and the heat just to keep it very simple so you want that physical energy to get that emulsion formed and then while it's cooling just give it a little refresh keep that going until you've got it down to that that 40 degrees to your cool down phase great fabulous okay golden great username says when cleaning and sanitizing your equipment is it okay to use a regular sponge to clean with and does it matter where we store the sponge so kind of in sanitizing in general what would we um, say to them as well in sanitizing, I think the preferred way to sanitize is to wash everything, making sure you're using a warm to hot soapy water, mm -hmm. um, clean it good. A dishwasher will work. Many people ask that question too. And then a 70% isopropyl alcohol. The reason that you don't want to go higher than that is if you go like to a 90, some people think 90 is better or 99%. It's got to be better. It evaporates, it dries too fast, and it doesn't do the job. So if you have that 90 or 99%, that's okay. Just cut it with some water. You have 70, you know, the get your percentages right. So you have at least a 70% isopropyl alcohol. Spray your, in, your tools down, your area down, and let it dry. That process of allowing it to dry, that time is what it takes to sanitize that area. It's very simple. You don't need to complicate it, and you're set to go. Great. Okay, flying through these. Okay. HH says, hi, can I use meadow foam oil or macadamia oil instead of cucumber glycerate? Or what do you recommend other than cucumber glycerate? Because I can't find it in the market where I live. That we are going to talk about. I'm looking at my lessons. I wrote um, some things down. So Lorraine is going to teach you about swapping out different ingredients. My recommendation to you is to understand too that you can experiment. If you have enough of the ingredients, do some experimenting. 
see what happens. Now, cucumber glycerite is a water soluble ingredient and you're talking about two oils here. Mm -hmm. So you're going to get a different result. Yeah. So I would... as far, you could just leave out your glycerite too and just bump it up with water if you're in a pinch and wanting to get the master class done. Yeah, I would say to this person, follow the masterclass, watch the lessons. And as we go through and talk to you about botanicals and other things you can use and how we measure things out, etc., you'll get more of an understanding of some substitutes you can use and you'll have more confidence going forward. We're kind of at the early stages at the moment. Um, but yeah, just follow the masterclass HH and all will be revealed. OK, Kath says. I've heard the term distilled water used several times. It's, is this just bottled distilled water or boiled water cooled down or something else? It is not tap water that's been boiled. It's actually, it's distilled water. So you don't want to go buy spring water. That's not the same thing. But you'll go, you can find it at your grocery store or something like that. It's very inexpensive to even buy a gallon of it. Um, so it will say distilled water. Great. Okay. Question from... Zara Ozzy says, how many creams will this make? So how many eye creams are we going to get with the amount of ingredients that we've told them to get? Zara, I believe that in your, if you purchased the kits, I believe you will have enough to get through the three formulations. If you want to make sure that what you'll do is look at how much of the hydrosol you're using, because you can already see that's going to be consistent throughout um, the three times that we're, you're looking at repeating it. Um, so see, do you have enough for all three of those? If not, maybe make your first one, skip the second one, or you, it, put water in there in place, something like that to experiment with. But you should have in your kits enough to get through all three formulations. And Christmas is coming. So just think of extra gifts. That's right. You can do it. <laughs> okay, next question. Okay, you used 2.25 grams of olive M1000. How did you calculate the amount of emulsifier you required for this emulsion? So I suppose this person's saying, how did you figure out the formulation? Right, this is quite simple and you'll learn this as you continue formulating. First and foremost, excuse me, I have some a little fuzzy on my lip. First <laughs> and foremost, you will follow the supplier's recommendations. So you'll have many ingredients like your, your carrier oils, their jojoba, there's no percentage of um, usage on that, but you'll find all of your emulsifiers, preservatives, things like that. Your supplier gives you the range that they can safely be used in. And um, that's how we started with the all of them. And there's a little bit more to it, uh, but I think it's probably a, would overwhelm some people here. So the important thing right now is 2.25 is the just the right amount to get a good medium consistency on this eye cream. And we know what we're doing. Our education team uh, led by Anna <laughs> put together this formula. So it's not just a DIY. Yeah. We have just kind of like made it up. We've tried and tested it. And um, that's why we have the award winning courses that we do because we can create this kind of thing. So that is how we know the amount. And just a big hello of, you know, to some people that are joined. I've got Maura, Karen, Aaliyah, Anna, there's so many people joining. So thank you so much. Um, we can do the masterclass without you really. So it really does take your participation to us to get through it. So thank you so much for joining. I can see the numbers going up. We're trying to get through as many as possible. Okay. Question from Anna. Anna says, how else do we learn but by doing and failing and trying again? I really enjoyed watching the first part of today's video. I'll say no question, just a positive comment. Thank you so much, Yay! Anna. That is what we like to hear. That is what we are here for. Okay, another question. So should this emulsion have any specific smell at this point? Are we going to add botanicals? Well, yes, but Therese, what else would we um, say? Should it have a smell, the emulsion? Well, so far you've added some rose hydrosol in there. So that is definitely going to give it a scent if you have a good rose hydrosol. Great. Short okay. answer, yes. <laughs> That's what we love, short answers. Okay, question from H. Jameson. So lesson three says to heat up the beakers to 75 degrees. Is it vital? Can it be a few degrees either side? Yes. You will see that the supplier of your olive oil usually recommends 70 degrees. You want to make sure you hit at least that and give, you know, when I say give or take, don't take too much off of that. But 75 is going to be just fine. You're not compromising the integrity of any of your products at 75. Great. 
Okay, Irana says, can some of you recommend a brand, Amazon, a brand, well, Amazon brand to buy the scale? So we do, I can't remember the actual brand that it is, um, Ivana, but we do have a scale in the masterclass section of our Amazon page. So if the two Sarahs could share the Amazon link, that would be really great. Um, I don't know if you remember what one is, Therese, but I know there's one in there. You can find a, a few different ones, but we do have one on our Amazon site, both of them. I think. I've had mine so long, I can't remember. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Next question from Karen says, was the cooling temperature 40 degrees Fahrenheit or centigrade for the masterclass? 40 degrees centigrade. Well done. I feel like you were thinking about that one, Therese. <laughs> 40 degrees C. I'm in the US, so everything here is Fahrenheit. Yeah. <laughs> but my formulating is all in centigrade. Okay, someone asks, hi, this is my first time asking questions on here. Hello, welcome. I have a question, how to, how do I make the lotion more silky and less greasy? So that's a hard one to answer because we're not there with you actually making it, but um, right. I think this person's making saying basically they want it to be a little bit thicker, like maybe it's thin and greasy. What would we recommend? That will, as you learn, that's something that you can adjust with the ingredients that you have. Um, even the oils, different oils will give you a different um, slip feel or what some people are calling that greasiness. Um, so the oils will vary that. If you use a butter, of course, you're going to have a little bit more. Later, you can add in starches. That's a question that's going to go a little bit beyond what we're going to cover here. But it is a great question. And yes, you can adjust that. And speaking of asking a question that's a little bit ahead, but I'm going to throw it anyway so we can explain. Rachel says, how do I raise the pH in a formulation? I've heard that one would use a sodium hydroxide solution. How would I go about making the exact mixture? Thank you in advance. So we are going to cover pH further down the line. So we'll save um, that for Q&A too, which we are doing on Friday at 4 p.m. UK time. We don't want to confuse you guys. We just want to kind of go up to the emotion right now. But we do show them, Therese, too, as we go through the masterclass. Yes. And the best thing is that you have these questions now, but once you see it in the masterclass, it's it's either going to be crystal clear or you're going to have the opportunity right after that to ask any questions you have. And that will that'll help you remember it a lot better. So we don't need to breeze it over today, but that's upcoming in another lesson. Exactly. Um, OK. So Denise is asking, so we do get questions about this because it's an eye cream. Would a hydrocell be safe for the eye area? That is a great question, Denise. And the answer is yes, because the hydrosol um, has the water soluble co um, compounds. So the when you distill uh, lavender or something like that, you, that's how you can extract some of the essential oil. But that water is left that has the water soluble compounds and those are safe for the eye area. When you're dealing with the oil in those um, essential oils, the sensitizers, that's where you can, you wanna make sure that you're doing it safely, but your hydrosols are fine. Great, and another question about the hydrosol, so we'll do it now. Is the rose hydrosol and rose water the same thing from Pallavi? Yes, you'll see that used interchangeably. Great. And Hilary, this isn't a question, this is a statement, but it's a great one. I've never made creams for years just to being scared. Lesson three to count that fear. Thank you so much, Hilary. That is oh, what Hilary. Yes. That is wonderful. Well done. Um, oh, no, I think, have we kind of covered this? This is another one from Hilary, so I'm going to show. I can't remember already if we have covered this. How important is it to keep the cooling phase at 40 degrees? Do you wait till it's 40 degrees and then take it out? What do we say, Teresa? Hillary, we'll talk about this more as we continue on, but why we consider that 40 degrees being the cooling stage is that's when you can start adding your other ingredients that are more heat sensitive. So do, we don't want them in there above 40. So you'll cool it down, you make your emulsion, you put it in your cold water bath, you'll cool it down to 40, and then in future, future lessons, then that's where we're gonna start adding some of those botanicals, your preservative, things like that go in the cool down phase. So you can still 
um, again, maintain the integrity of that ingredient. Great. Another question on sterilization. It's good that you're thinking about this, guys. We want you to be safe. Um, I think they're saying that is so great from another comment. Um, I have my ingredients, but not all the equipment. How am I sterilizing things? What are you using the alcohol and wiping things down? So the area that someone's working in, is it okay to just wipe it down with alcohol to start? Um, yeah, I like to just give it a, again, give it a wash and then just spray it down, mist it with your 70% isopropyl alcohol and allow it to dry. Great. Fabulous. And we've got, I think, about maybe six more questions left, guys. So if you do have any questions, throw it in now, because once I get through that six, we're kind of kind of close it. Once everyone's kind of asked, we want to cover everything that we can. Um, so just throw it in there and we can see if Chibwes knows the answer, which she does because she knows so much. <laughs> <laughs> okay so Kristen asks if you add the cool down ingredients when it's too warm what is the end result of the cream you may not notice much of an end result of your cream but what you won't see is that you have some of the the um, properties within those ingredients cannot withstand heat and you want the benefits of those so what you can't see is that now you have damaged those, uh, degraded the um, efficacy of it, and you're just not getting the benefits any longer. Great. Okay, this is one, I think, based on lesson one. Do I need a formulation philosophy for everything, or should I just start? I think a lot of people think they need the answers to what formulator they want to be or what they want to make. There's so much out there. Um, what advice would we give to Juliet? Juliet? do the master class and just start thinking just start thinking about what's important to you then start thinking about what do you want to formulate who do you want to formulate it for so really your formulation philosophy do expect that to change a couple of times that's not uncommon at all but it's always good to come back and revisit it and say am i sticking with my philosophy has something changed have i learned something new where i really want to use this ingredient Mm -hmm. And do I need to adjust that philosophy? Amazing. So Aaliyah asks, well, kind of says, I ordered my kit from the UK and the package has been sent but held at customs in Belgium. They sent me a mail asking for custom fees, which is paid. If I do not have, where can I buy? So we do have a supply guide, which you can find in your study area. I just wanted to show this comment because we do do our best. We have tried to find supplies all over the world. We didn't have kits in the beginning and now we create these master kits to make it as easy as possible for you. But if you can't get hold of one, you know, because they do sell out, we are sorry. We do our very best to get as much in stuff as we possibly can. Um, Aaliyah, just do your very best. Like go on the Amazon site, see what you can find. I'm sure you'll be able to get this um, package eventually, but if it does come a little bit later, don't worry. We have so many people making the cream a little bit later. So just watch the lessons every day when they're released at two o'clock. Um, write notes. Just follow the community. Have Most important thing is to have fun with it. Don't panic that you can't start when you want to. I know you kind of like want to start and you're excited, but do not worry. Uh, your package will get there eventually. I can't help you with customs, but I can help you just to relax. Don't worry. You can just enjoy the masterclass and um, make it a little bit later. And I wish you luck getting that package. I know it can be, uh, I know it can be frustrating. Yes, uh, and you just answered Ellie's question too. Her kit is just delayed. It's okay. Yeah, it's just delayed. Follow um, along. Happens every time. Well, this person's jumping ahead. This is Spears, but we shall show. Okay, so can you add the preservative to the emulsion and save it for later? Uh, at this stage, we're going to be talking about preservatives later. So I'm actually going to tap dance around that one a little <laughs> bit because there's more you need to understand about the preservatives. Um, so I would not encourage anybody to just take a preservative and drop it in your product right now. So I'm going to save that until you've learned it in the master class. Fabulous. Okay, so Cindy asks, what is the temperature we should be heating to before the cooling down, or is it 40 degrees centigrade from Cindy? Again, Cindy, when you're, um, when you're taking your, your oil and your water that or your hydrosol, that's all we're working with so far, and that all of M1000, that all of M1000 requires at least 70 degrees to melt it. So go ahead and get that melted at the 70. When it reaches that, and you'll take your, you saw in the video, you're, you're then adding your oil and emulsifier beaker, 
and your water beaker, then you're blending those together. Give that a good whisk. Go back and review the answer or the video. You're going to see that. Whisk it really well. Cool it down to 40. But 70 and 40 are your main two temperatures that you want to remember. Great. For the ingredients we're using. I should put that disclaimer in there. <laughs> okay. So Tina says... This is my second masterclass and I'm in love with formulating. Oh. That is what we aim to do. So thank you so much. Saving money to enroll as soon as I can. So our entrepreneur program does actually open up next week and it is our award-winning program. We have five courses all put together to create, well, turn you into the formulation of your dreams, basically. And we'll be talking more about that as we go through the masterclass. So I just want to say it's for everyone. It's for people that have formulated before. It's for beginners. Um, if you go into our graduates page, there are so many graduates on there that started the masterclass and then upgraded to the entrepreneur program. And now they have their own brand. So it truly is life changing. It's amazing. So we hope to welcome you as a student one day, Tina. Maybe this time that would be amazing. We would love to see you as a student and see your journey progress. Okay, Kathleen says she's waiting for a kit. Kathleen, don't worry, it will get there. Uh, lots of people saying they haven't received their ingredients or equipment, it's absolutely fine, don't worry. The fact that you're here, the fact that you're taking part, you guys are the action takers, so don't worry, you are already ahead of the game because you've joined this live. Okay, Stella P says, is it sometimes difficult to, oh, sorry, it's sometimes difficult to get precise measurements. Is it okay to go over by a few grams? What would, how strict to we, Therese, on our formulation? Stella, that's going to depend upon what you're measuring. Um, first of all, you saw in the video where Lorraine poured down a glass rod. That's going to help you to get more precise. Or if you have a um, pipette or things like that are going to help you to get more accurate. When you're talking in terms of the rose hydrosol, that's not going to be such a big deal. When you're talking in terms of botanicals or preservatives that we'll show you later, that could be a big deal. So you do want to get as accurate as you can. Great. I think I have about four questions left. So I'm going to go through those and then wrap it up. I hope we've been able to help a lot of you start and um, answer a few questions for you. Uh, okay. Okay. Let's just have a look. Okay, well, this is a common one because uh, it can happen and there are no mistakes. There are just processes. So someone asked, what do I do if my emulsion separates? You laugh, you learn, and you move on. <laughs> it's okay. It could be for a variety of reasons. It could have been there was still wet alcohol in, in one of your beakers. It could be the temperature didn't go right. It couldn't be you didn't give it enough physical energy. It's okay. It literally the most important for, thing for you to remember is it happens to every single formulator at some point in time. You look at it, you think, is there anything I did? Make any notes you can, mm -hmm. throw it away and experiment again. Exactly. And I just want to kind of wrap up for everyone i want everyone watching this live to just really remember that if they are making their emulsion if anything goes wrong just make it again make notes join the community join the exclusive facebook page post up your failures post up your excitement post up things that have gone fantastic yes. it's a learning process and for a lot of people who are starting the masterclass is from the beginning so please don't worry other people just want to see what you've made and you can help other people learn and yourself by sharing your experiences as well so that's what that group is there for so I want everyone watching a lot of people will be watching from that group but if you're watching from YouTube and you're not part of the group yet the two Sarah's will add the link in the comments and go join it because it's just loads of fun in there and everyone's just sharing their pictures and everything so please go and join in the fun okay Sabina says Hello from Australia. When will you have a course in the new year? Well, our entrepreneur program, if you aren't aware, is going to become available next week. And then next year we have a whole different range of dates. So we offer different courses. But if you are thinking of joining us, we do open our next enrollment period in um, a week, basically. So lots to look forward to. And if you would like to explore more, if you go onto our website and just check out our blog section, we have tons of stuff in there, lots of stuff that Therese mm -hmm. works on blogs, you know, all sorts of formulations that you can really get started and have lots of fun with. But finish the masterclass first, but there is tons of stuff that you can uh, challenge yourself with 
And so don't worry, there's never an end to formulation once you've started. Uh, okay, so Pally V is back and asks, how do you clean the pipettes? So how do we clean those? If they are plastic disposable ones, I recommend throw them away. There's no way to get in there and clean them. I like to use the glass uh, reusable ones. You just pop the little top off. You will use those little handy straw cleaner brushes or whatever. My, I had a brush that came right with my um, glass pipettes. Just clean that again, soap and water, put a little mist of alcohol in there, allow that to dry and you are set to use it again. Amazing. Uh, and I have a question and a statement here that I'm going to finish on. So let me find the question. Okay. It's kind of a trick question because we can't really answer it. But what can I use to preserve our formulation? Well, we can answer that, but, you know, we will be going into it in detail. But what would we say about this? Uh, what I will say, there's a lot of different things that you can use. We at Formula Botanica, we use uh, preservatives that are accepted in natural skincare formulating. So we've selected one of those for this course, which you will learn in, let me see here, module seven. In six, you're gonna learn how to choose a preservative. And then seven, you're actually gonna make that formulation that includes the preservative. Great, exactly. And I just want to say a, few, a thank you to everyone that's saying thank you in the comments. We get so much love and appreciation for this, all the work that the team does. And Louise says, thank you so much. This is very exciting. Um, got love from Cindy, um, the Angela. There's so many people saying thank you. And we thank you right back. Because as I said, we couldn't do this masterclass without you. And I want everyone to go out there and love it. And I have this comment from Denise that says... There are no mistakes or failures, just learning experiences. And that's a great point to end on. That's right, yeah. Denise. That is exactly what you do. Nobody comes in being an expert formulator. As I mentioned, our graduate page, there are hundreds of brands on there. And so many of them started with the masterclass, some of our blogs, and they found the love of formulation and studied with us. And they are where they are today. So even if you aren't thinking of joining a brand, or sorry, creating a brand, just enjoy the masterclass. Just enjoy the experience watch the lessons, take tons of notes and join in all the community stuff that we're putting on, like the lives and the group as well. And you'll have the best uh, masterclass experience. Our next slide is tomorrow for our VIP members. And I know that you're a big fan of VIP. Yes. Therese, Therese loves it. I am. There's so, I cannot believe the information that is available to you. You get it for a longer amount of time so you don't have to worry about consuming it so quickly. If you can... If there's any way you can, invest in yourself and do the VIP. So we have a VIP offer. So we have the free masterclass. And the VIP just raises the game slightly. You get a formulation booklet, free videos, tons of goodies, and a live that people will be joining tomorrow at 6 p.m. UK time. There is still time to join the VIP. If you can um, find the link in the comments, I'll get asked the two servers to post it in there. And become a member and it as Therese said we've got people just absolutely loving that so if that's for you we have that option there for you we also have Q&A 2 on Friday at 4 p.m UK time I believe and by that time we would have been adding botanicals doing lots of extra stuff so you can ask your questions there and we'll be able to go a little bit broader but thank you everyone for joining this live today thank you Therese for answering all the questions yes first time I'm so happy to be here with all of you yeah it's the first time Therese has done a Q&A one all by herself so props to you as well Therese well done and um, Dana I'm just going to throw out this comment from Dana says VIP is worth it Joss throwing that out there so we know that Dana but thank you so much for telling our community that and Kath asks because we do get asked this a lot are the q a's on replay yes they are so wherever you're watching them from facebook or youtube you'll be able to go back and watch that q a and your study area as well if you scroll down we should have the three q a's there so as they become live you'll be able to go back to that area and watch the q a so as you're watching this q a one will be available to you there and yeah, I think that's everything. So thank you so much, everyone, for joining this live. I can see everyone saying thank you. Thank you so much. I see some familiar names there, which I could list everybody. And we'll see you either tomorrow if you're a VIP or we'll see you on Friday at four o'clock. And um, we can answer all of your questions. So thank you, everyone. And we will see you yes. next week. Bye. Have a beautiful day. Bye, everybody.